Welcome to this ramp tutorial video. In this video, we're going to look at getting around and getting started with ramp. So when you start up ramp, this is what displays first. We're going to go through the main elements of the graphical user interface. On the left hand side in the tools tab is the tools tree view. This lists all of the readers, writers, processes, tools and links that are available to you as resources in RAMP. In the search tab, you can search for particular keywords and it will list the specific RAMP processor tool or link, reader or writer, that matches the keywords that you put in the search. So this is a quick way of finding the right tools that you need to use in RAMP. In the main part of the display, there are three further tabs. The help tab links to each of the processes, tools, or links, and provides further information about that particular processor or tool, uh, giving you information about how to use the tool, some of the standards, or in this case, the uh, API documentation for the RAMP uh, libraries, uh, etc. The rasters tab is the tab that displays raster information and allows you to render it and interrogate those rasters once you've performed the processing step in RAMP. We'll come back to this a little bit later. The workflows tab is a tab that allows you to chain multiple RAMP processes together into a workflow and then subsequently publish that workflow to a series of uh, different files like batch scripts or a Python script or in fact a C-sharp, for example, a .NET application. Again, we'll come back to this a little bit later. At the bottom here is the process information window. This displays information regarding the steps that are being taken by a particular RAMP process as they're being executed. It also displays a progress bar at the bottom that allows you to see the progress of each of the steps that you're processing in RAMP. Let's now have a look at a simple workflow to add a raster and render it in the raster display area. So firstly, I need to choose my reader. These are things that read specific raster formats. The Readers here are the readers that are natively supported by RAMP, and RAMP also uses GDAL to extend the number of file formats it can, uh, it can support for reading and writing. The quick way to add a raster into the raster window is to right click in the layer control here and choose Add Raster. This will then pop up a dialog box in which you can choose the particular type of raster that you'd like to read and to import into the raster display. So let's choose this bathymetric data set. You can see the process information at the bottom here as that processor or reader is executing. Once the process is complete, the raster is added to the layer listing here. You'll note that this raster has a render, it doesn't have a thumbnail and doesn't have a rendering applied to it. So to render it, I right click on it and choose the render option. Now that raster is, is rendered. So I can see the raster in the main display here and as I move my cursor around, I can see the coordinate of, the, of my cursor position. If I am to click in the raster, it also tells me the value of the cell that I clicked on. The display tab here shows me the color palette that's been applied to this raster and the histogram to which that color palette has been applied. I can change the color palette and the stretch that that color palette has been applied to the histogram by clicking on the raster rendering properties here. 
I can choose the color palette that I would like to change it to. So I'm going to choose, um, let's have a look. I'm going to choose a color palette that looks like this. And I can also choose how I want to display it. So at the moment, the color, padded, pa color palette is applied linearly to the histogram. I can also choose to, for example, equalize it. The color palette is now equalized to the histogram. If I click OK, the rendering will update in the raster display. I can apply other stretches as well. So in, instead of equalize, I may choose to define split points. And I can define them based on, say, standard deviations. So let's apply splits linearly at one standard deviation from the mean. You'll see the color palette has stretched and I have splits at one at the mean and one standard deviation either side. Let's apply that. Once I'm happy with my display, I can move on to exploring the data further by clicking on the longitudinal profile tab. This allows me to pick a start and an endpoint, and the associated longitudinal profile will be displayed at the bottom. Let's do that again. There we go, there's my longitudinal profile here at the start and the endpoint that I defined. I can also look at some of the information about the raster. So, some statistical information is provided here in the About tab, and again, the histogram is provided here. When I move my cursor in the histogram, it shows me the value, the count and the percentage at that particular value. If I want to rebin or redefine the histogram, I can do that by clicking on Edit Histogram Definition. And then choose, for example, I might want to only put 50 bins in here. So I'll update my histogram. Now my histogram has 50 bins. If I click OK, that's also shown now here in the histogram view. Let's look now a little bit more at detail around the readers, writers, and processes. So the main functional operation in RAMP is what's known as a processor. A processor has this icon, which is a cog and a little arrow next to it. Processes are grouped into generally functional areas or themes. If I click on a particular processor, or double click on it, you'll see a series of what are known as methods. So each processor defines a series of methods. Each method generally takes a raster input and creates a raster output. It might take multiple inputs and generate multiple raster inputs, outputs. Um, in fact, it doesn't even have to take any rasters uh, in terms of its inputs and outputs. It could purely work on reading specific file formats and exporting different file formats. So it's quite flexible. In this example, I'm going to apply a hill shade to the raster that we previously imported. So I've clicked on the hill shade method and it's asking me for a series of properties. The first is the input raster. So I'm going to choose the raster that we just added. And then it's asked for some hill shade specific properties like the altitude and azimuth and Z factor. So I'm happy with all those. I'm going to click now OK and it will execute the pr processor method to apply a hill shade and generate a new hill shade raster. So the hill shade has been generated and you'll notice there's still no rendering applied to it. So I'm going to generate some rendering for it. Okay, it's come in with the default color palette. So let's just change that color palette to a grayscale palette. I like this one. And you can see I probably need to set some split points to make it stand out a little bit more. Let's do that. Let's define them as one standard deviation. 
about the mean and let's apply that and you'll notice that now my hillshade is looking more like a hillshade I might decide I want to invert that because I think it looks more like what the terrain that's better that looks more like the terrain to me now these are I see those as little mounds rather than little indents so let's look now a little bit at the help file system so as we mentioned before the help tab displays all of the help information in this case we're looking again at the terrain analysis tools and it's listed all of the methods uh, for the terrain amount now sorry the terrain analysis processor um, and I can go to each of these we just used hillshade let's click on that it goes to the hillshade section it explains all of the information that I need to know about those properties that we just looked at and once I've read and understood those I can actually take a shortcut and click launch method here and it'll take us back to that same um, processor method uh, page with the ability to set the different um, properties so that's one of the features of um, of the help file system in ramp and it's been documented to a very detailed level just so you're aware many of the things that we've talked about in this tutorial are actually available up here in the getting started help file page or link and all the stuff that we've just talked about is in here so if you want to know more information you can go to getting started last off I'm briefly going to talk about workflows workflows are a way of chaining processes together so for example I'm going to add a reader and I'm going to choose that same file that we use the the um, bathymetry file and I'm going to set up different processing steps so I've added a reader I'm telling it the format is an Esri bill file and it wants to know what the output should be called now the output in this case is simply a variable name so I'll just call it Bathy now I need to add a processor so I'm going to choose add processor and it's going to ask me what processor do I want to add so for the sake of uh, familiarity let's add the terrain analysis processor and again the hillshade method so I click OK and you'll notice now all the properties that we previously looked at are available in this workflow step and it's asking me what input do I want so I'm going to choose Bathy and what do my what should my output be so I'm going to call it hillshade now I want to add another step and I'm going to add a writer so I'm going to take the hillshade raster and I'm going to output it to say a ramp binary format and I'm going to give it a file name now so let's call it site bathy ramp now when I execute this uh, processor it'll basically do exactly the same steps we did before um, but it will now export it to a ramp file and execute these steps I can add any other steps I want to in here so for example I might add another processor that does uh, some um, resampling so let's choose uh, let's downsample this image now I need to downsample it before I write so I can choose select this processor step choose up and now it puts it in between the heel shade step and the writing step I'm choosing my heel shade as the input my output is going to be called heel shade resamp um, I'm just going to accept these particular properties here and I'm going to choose hillshade resamp as the input and I'm going to write out to that ramp file again I can then execute uh, run these processor steps save them to a file so that I can reuse these processing steps um, or export them to for example a batch script or a Python script uh, but we'll look at this in more detail in the workflow video tutorial so that's a pretty good summary of very quickly getting used to the main elements of, of ramp and what they do I hope the video was of use to you thanks